on a stick. And this rope kind, they just, they don't care whether it's very flat or not, and they just let it crumple together and dry it very completely. Now this is very crunchy, it's like chips, nice and crisp there. So to use it, you need to soak it. And the first recipe I'm making is using the rope yuba, which is soaked right here. And as you can see, once it soaks, it's very soft and tough, though. It has the texture of meat. As a matter of fact, both Chinese and Japanese Buddhist monks have used this particular product as a meat substitute in their cooking. To make this yuba brisket stew that I'm going to show you how to do, I cut the yuba into three or four inch lengths like that. And then I've soaked it here, kind of marinated it, in two tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of melted butter or margarine, along with half a teaspoon of pepper. Now because there is some butter or margarine already in here, I put it into a heated wok and add additional oil only if necessary. The only reason to add any additional oil is to keep it from sticking to the wok. If you find your ubis starting to stick like this, just add a tiny bit of oil and add it as needed. Now this should be cooked or fried like this until the yuba browns. There, and when it's brown like this, kind of a nice golden brown, just <laughs> scrape all of the yuba off into a baking dish, a fairly deep baking dish, because we're going to make a stew in that. Now, as you can see, I'm using my gas burner just turned upside down for the wok stand. And it works really well. Okay, now, the next step is just to saute a tablespoon of safflower oil together with half a cup each of celery, and carrots. And this just gets sauteed together just to kind of braise the vegetables and until they turn a real brilliant color but get a little bit of brown on them as well. So you want to do this over a high heat. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the edges or parts of the carrot and celery are just starting to get a tiny bit braised or brown. So the vegetables, these vegetables are done. I'm just kind of toss them in evenly into the yuba. Now I'm going to make the flavoring or the gravy that goes into this. To make the gravy or flavoring, first of all, I'll just put a bay leaf into the pan, which will get removed later. And I'm going to combine one tablespoon of a vegetable yeast extract into three cups of water. Now, this yeast extract is very thick, as you can see, thicker than molasses, but it has a really nice, meaty, nice meaty flavor and it's just yeast. And into this, I'm adding two t ounces of brandy. One nice thing about cooking with alcohol, <laughs> I better get this up the flame. <laughs> One nice thing about cooking with alcohol is that the alcohol cooks out and the flavor of the beverage stays in. And that's really nice anyways because the alcohol often hides the flavor, the true flavor of the drink. And it's actually the alcohol that is very heavily caloric as well as damaging to the body. 
it's actually not a mistake that the word intoxicant contains the word toxin because alcohol is actually a toxin or a poison and that is what causes a person to feel inebriated and also damages the body. Now once the vegetable bouillon yeast extract is totally dissolved, just pour this liquid in on top of the sautéed mixture and then it's ready to bake in the oven. I think I'm going to need some help to get done here. Madhava, do you want to help me? Good. There's one baking. I've got a Yuba brisket stew baking. Go ahead and get it out of the oven. This has to bake at about 375 degrees for one hour. And it should be covered either with a lid or just with foil like this. Here, bring the done one over here. Good. That's really hot. Okay, now onto this baked one. We're going to add some vegetables that I didn't want to add previously because I don't ever like to overcook my vegetables. So you go ahead and saute them together here, okay? We need a tablespoon of the oil and you can saute one turnip that's been chopped up, one onion, and two cups of fresh peas, okay? You do that and I'm going to pour, let's see where did I put my cup? I'm going to pour the juices out of this for him to make a gravy with later. And then I'm going to leave him <laughs> to work on this and show you how to make a gourmet dish out of Yuba. Okay. Just pour as much of the gravy out as you can. And after you're done sauteing that manhava, just pour it in and mix it into this and put a tablespoon of arrowroot into the gravy, okay? And I'll show you how to make a gourmet dish with the sheet yuba. This is a stuffed yuba roll, and I've got the stuffing already made here with one-third cup of dried apricots, quarter cup of water, two cups of diced celery, half a teaspoon asafoetida, one teaspoon bouillon extract again, four cups diced apple, one cup crushed pineapple, one tablespoon grated fresh ginger root, a quarter teaspoon white pepper, eighth of a teaspoon cinnamon, one sixteenth of a teaspoon cayenne, half a cup of ground nuts. That all gets cooked down till it forms kind of a jammy consistency like this. Now I'm going to divide this into four parts and I'm just going to retain one fourth of it. This will make enough to stuff four Yuba rolls which makes eight servings. I've already got three rolls made up so I'm just going to use this quarter in five sheets of Yuba that have been cut to about nine by thirteen inches and soaking in a cup of water that's mixed with a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, three tablespoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of arrowroot, and one tablespoon of soy sauce. That adds a lot of nice flavor between the layers of the Yuba sheets. Then I take this roll. Are you done? Do you need help? Okay. There you go. Good. Go ahead and scoop it out. Good. And then you can make the gravy, right? Okay, I'll leave. You're doing a good job, though, Madhava. Okay, now the stuffing gets stuffed into these sheets like this, kind of into a log-like shape, and rolled into it like this, and tied up with dental floss, much like these here. But be sure to use unwaxed dental floss because I'm sure you don't want wax all over your yuba brisket, your yuba rolls. There's probably some kind of special string sold in gourmet kitchen stores to use for tying these things, but I usually use whatever is around the house. 
because my main interest in cooking is really feeding my family healthy foods that taste good. I don't really frequent gourmet shops too often. How's that going, Manola? Okay, just pack in the oven. No, the gravy's done, so go ahead and pour it into the rest of this here. And it's ready to serve, okay? So you can go ahead and take it to the table. Ooh. There you go. Good. That looks delicious. <laughs> okay, now, in the same pan that the stuffing was cooked in, you want to saute two tablespoons of oil together with one onion, two large carrots, and two celery sticks that have been chopped up. Or not two celery sticks, but two celery stalks. And this sautés until all of those vegetables get a tiny bit brown. Now once your vegetables brown a tiny bit, just push them off to the side of the skillet like this. And in the middle or the center, put some of your, the stuffed yuba rolls. I usually try to pour a little oil in the bottom to make sure they don't stick. And also to help brown the yuba rolls. These have to brown. And then we're going to make a ginger beer sauce made with alcohol-free beer. Because in this country there are more people who are not are, are trying to abstain from alcohol since prohibition, there are many, many alcohol-free beverages coming out on the market. And there are quite a few nice-tasting alcohol-free beers. Even though the alcohol does cook off, I like to use alcohol-free beverages whenever I can. Now, once the yuba rolls have browned, just flip them over to kind of let them brown on the other side as well. And then start the sauce off with two 12-ounce cans, preferably of alcohol-free beer, along with one and a half cups of water, three tablespoons of tomato sauce, tomato paste, I'm sorry, and one tablespoon of the vegetable yeast extract. And into this, I'm going to drop, drop a spice bag, which contains six to eight apple, allspice berries, two bay leaves, four garlic cloves, one inch of cinnamon stick, and two quarter size slices of fresh ginger root. And that just gets pulled out, of course, much later. And sprinkle on top of this a tablespoon of lemon juice, along with half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of spike, and about two tablespoons of fresh thyme leaves. Now this all goes into an oven covered at 350 degrees and should bake there for about 45 minutes. I don't have time to wait on that though because I want to show you how to cook alcohol by flaming it. Now most of us have either gone to a fancy restaurant or seen in the movies dishes where they actually bring to the table all up in flames. <laughs> the way they flame those particular dishes is by cooking alcohol out of the dish. Now, one of the dishes that is often served as a gourmet end to a meal is a cafe brulot, which is basically a coffee with some brandy in it. Today, I'm going to show you how you can closely duplicate that to make a caffeine-free and alcohol-free cafe brulot. To start off with, I've got in a glass bowl here, and in choosing the bowl that you're going to serve your brulot in, be sure that it's one that won't crack because of heat. Inside of the bowl, put about a tablespoon and a half of honey and either one vanilla pod or, this is one cut in half, <laughs> either that or a teaspoon of vanilla extract 
and cut the rind of one orange very thin. You want to peel all the white membrane off of it and then cut it into less than matchstick thin slices. Put that in the bottom of the bowl and then heat some brandy up. I've got one and a half cups of brandy here that's being heated. Now, you, to flame brandy or any liquor, you need to start heating it to get the alcohol evaporating up. But you don't want to bring it to a boil because usually by then the alcohol cooks out completely. You just need to heat it until the liquid starts moving around the edge of the pot. And that indicates that the alcohol is hot enough to light. <laughs> now once it's lit, this should be poured immediately into the orange rind, honey, and vanilla and allowed to burn. Ooh. And you should try to, oops, it gets pretty hot from that flaming <laughs> alcohol. And then just stir it around until the flame totally dies out. Most Cafe Brulot recipes call for the uh, coffee to be poured into your flaming mixture after a few seconds. But I let the flame just go completely until the flames completely die out. Because when they completely die out, that means that the alcohol is completely gone. Now, because it's flaming this long, you should really consider how much alcohol really is in brandy. It's real surprising when you really think about how much alcohol is in different sorts of alcoholic beverages. It's real surprising. See, it makes a good flame. <laughs> and all this alcohol, if consumed, will actually destroy the body in time. As soon as there are absolutely no more flames coming off of your brandy and orange peel mixture, then it's time to pour in the caffeine-free grain coffee. And this will give you your caffeine and alcohol-free brulot. Now, usually, Café Brulot is served in little tiny dimatisse cups like this, and either served before or after a meal. This makes a nice drink to serve to your guests. Now, one way to flame alcohol is to make a flambé. I'm going to show you how to flambe some fruit. I'm making a Caribbean flambe using fruits that grow in the Caribbean. Of course, you can use any kind of fruit that you want, really. Today, I'm going to be using one whole mango that's been cut in half and peeled, and two slices of pineapple that are about 3 quarters of an inch thick, and two bananas that are cut in half. And to cut a mango, just in case you want to try the Caribbean fruits, all mangoes come with a kind of a wide side and a narrow side. The seed runs this way down the narrow side. So to cut it, just take your knife and start up by the stem here and come in as close as you possibly can to the seed and slide the knife edge down along the side of the seed like that. And you've got your mango half. Now you can either peel this to make a half like that, or if you just would like to eat your mango raw, which is one of the best ways to eat them, cut little cubes like this and pop it open and eat it like that. Anyways, to flambe fruit though, you need to heat both the fruit and the alcohol so that they are both about the same temperature. So I'm going to start one of the pieces of mango and one of the pieces of pineapple. I'm going to do half of the plate at a time because of the size of my skillet today. And this just has to 
heat and brown slightly on one side and then we'll flip it to the other. As soon as the pineapple and mango are slightly brown on one side, just flip it over and then add, whoops, if I can, the banana. Because the banana cooks up really quickly and gets mushy really fast. Now this is a very crucial point. I have to very quickly add the rum. I'm going to, oh, before I add the rum, I'm going to drizzle Barbados molasses over the top of this because Barbados molasses originated in Barbados, down in the Caribbean. And then I'm going to pour the rum in real quick after I light my match here. Rum also is made originally down in the Caribbean. There. And while it's flaming, some coconut gets sprinkled in on top. And this makes a really simple to put together dessert, and yet very different. You can take it to the table flaming. <laughs> of course, you can use other kinds of fruit if you like. You can also dice the fruit up and use this as a covering for ice creams or any kind of other dessert. This is the best way to use alcohol, only from time to time though, not on a daily basis, but to be sure to cook the alcohol out of the dishes. We have a dessert, a drink. This is a pretty much everyday hearty meal. This is the Yuba brisket stew with a pie topping on it, as you can see. And that makes a good hearty meal or a more gourmet entree in the rolled Yuba sheets. Now, a lot of people used to call alcoholic beverages spirits because it was thought to lift the spirit. But the fact is that medical science has proven it does just the opposite. The best way to lift the spirit, and what I do, is daily have a little food for thought. I've often heard people remark with wonder as to why, with all the information confirmed by medical science about certain foods and habits that destroy the body, anyone would continue to consume certain products. The ancient book of wisdom, the Bhagavad Gita, explains it very practically. As a boat in the water is swept away by a strong wind, even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. Controlling the senses, rather than being controlled by them, actually leads to physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. To get your copy of Kathy's new 750-page cookbook, The Art of Dieting Without Dieting, send a check or money order for $21.95 plus $2 for postage and handling to Kathy's Kitchen, P.O. Box 1122, Glendale, California, 91209. If you prefer to use your MasterCard or Visa, call toll-free 1-800-331-6161.